I'm Andy Chanley from 88.5 FM, and this is the 88.5 FM Here at Home series of video conference interviews. And joining us today is C. Wolf. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Andy. And C. Wolf is basically uh, Alex Brown Church, uh, who's here. And the new album is called Through a Dark Wood. It's out now on Danger Bird Records. Uh, and two new singles you've been hearing on 88.5 FM these uh, last couple of months, uh, Fear of Failure and Forever Nevermore. Um, congratulations on the new record. Thanks so much. It feels good to finally have it out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really lovely. Uh, where, where are we talking to you uh, from today? Are you here in Southern California? Yeah, I'm in LA. I'm, at my, I'm in my house, actually. All right, and um, are you originally from here? I'm originally from um, Berkeley. From so Berkeley, North okay. So from the Bay Area. Uh, and then you go to school in, uh, in New York. You go to NYU and start making music there uh, in the late 90s and then eventually find your way back here. Is that about how to sum it up? Pretty much, yeah. I kind of didn't really start doing music until uh, I moved out here, though. But um, I went to film school and kind of started to learn, you know, how to write songs while I was there and then just came out here and started playing music with met some dudes and started a band and the rest was history, I guess. Walk me through how you go to film school and learn how to write songs. <laughs> well, my, my uh, college roommate actually was um, uh, in a band and he was very enthusiastic about music like I was and he showed me how to play some music. So he just showed me how to play some songs on guitar. He had a guitar and I was like, oh, okay. I, I had already been playing bass. So bass was my first instrument actually. Um, but yeah, I know it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so I read that, uh, that you actually wrote an entire album of songs. It starting like five years ago. You, uh, you follow up uh, your previous album, you, you write an entire album of songs and then you scrap it all of it you just throw everything away and completely start over why on earth would you do anything so drastic it's a good question um yeah i was asking myself uh kind of the same thing because the record was so long but um well i don't know i think i i just didn't as much as i liked the songs in the first sort of batch as i call it um it just didn't feel like a record to me uh, I tend to think of the records as like a whole piece, you know, and so there has to be some kind of reoccurrent themes or just sort of a through line that, you know, carries all the songs um, or holds them all together. And it just didn't feel like that. And um, I was going through a lot of like personal stuff, uh, a dark wood as, <laughs> as it so happens. Um, and I think I was kind of in denial and not really wanting to tap into that for the songs and so it, everything was like on the surface was like decent but it just did, I didn't personally feel connected to it so I didn't feel like a you know like I love this so I just uh yeah it was a really really tough decision but it was um it had to be done and I'm glad I did uh because I'm you know I, I feel way more connected to the, the record that came out uh I notice um that uh it's called through a dark wood and not into a dark wood yeah uh, so it, it tells me that uh yeah in listening to the album you're dealing with the sturm and drang of of difficult relationships but it, it sounds actually more uh, an account of of catharsis of something that you survive instead of uh, suffer from um is that was that accurate yeah definitely um yeah, it's sort of like looking back in a way, uh, or at least at this this stage, definitely. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, I think of it as everybody in our lives, we all go through dark woods of our own at multiple points in our lives. And this, this happened to be one where it was pretty profound. And, um, you know, it, it was, the record is like, it's about a lot of different things in, and, um, you know, life, death, love, heartbreak, fear, anxiety, um, you know, current events and, and uh, just like the big life stuff. Um, 
Uh, at least that's what it was for me. And um, and coming out of it on your, yeah, it does have an overall hopeful kind of uh, thing. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, going through that, it was like, it took a lot of sort of uh, dogged perseverance and like determination to get through and with, a, with you know, get through to that sort of light on the other side of the woods. Um, and yeah. So that's that's pretty much what it is, and it's weird right now to be in this moment um, where you know during the COVID nineteen thing, and um, it's strange because we're kind of all collectively going through this very not exact same experience, but very similar kind of experience. Mm-hmm. We're all in this in a, in a current dark wood together, um, having like existential questions and all the rest. So. Um, I had this exact same conversation with uh, uh, Liza Ann a, a week or so ago. Uh, it's interesting, you know, when, when you feel depressed about something, you feel like no one else in the world knows how you feel. Right now, pretty much everybody in the world knows exactly how you feel. Exactly. It's true. We really are all in this together. And there's this, there is like a definite sense of comfort in that solidarity, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking, uh, getting back to the uh, the scrapping the album and, until you find that that through line that makes you happy. Um, I would imagine that's empowering. I, I was it made me think of a vacation I just took with my son. I have a nine year old, and and a couple of years ago he was having a problem. His teacher told me of. Um, sitting down and, and just drawing something. He would get balled up in his, in his mind about what's coming down on the, on the page, didn't look like what was in his head, and, and he would you know, get frustrated. And yeah. I said, it doesn't matter, just, just do anything. And we go to Amsterdam, to the Van Gogh Museum, and, and we see this one painting, and it says that uh, Van Gogh had uh, did, uh, done one painting and wasn't happy with it, so he scraped the canvas, since the canvas is, are, are you know, pretty uh, uh, useful, and just started over and did this painting of a bat. I said, you see, even the masters can make a mistake and go back and they just start over again. I would have to imagine that makes you feel, you know, kind of bulletproof that, that after you're done with something like that, you aren't afraid if you find a, a false, you know, a, a dead end somehow. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't know if I ever feel bulletproof, but it definitely you learn the lesson that, oh, you know, if something doesn't work the first time, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work at all you could just you know try try and try again yeah. Uh, yeah. we're talking to alex brown church uh, who is a sea wolf and uh, on this album there's just so many um uh, wonderful beautiful songs on it uh, and i really enjoyed the uh the very personal song writing the the narrative that goes through it whether it's it's particularly personal or not that's uh, only you would know but um it was in, like Frank O'Hara. There's a song called Frank O'Hara on the album, uh, asking the the mid-century poet uh, what he would write about a, a given situation. I'm curious uh, if you have other influences that you you know ride on your shoulder as you're writing things quite often that you can uh, you can share. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, it, like that's an interesting question because if you're not uh asking like what musical influences i have um yeah i mean i I don't know if there's anybody in particular i think it's just kind of like anything that you've taken in in your life somehow as you're writing music uh, or whatever you're writing um like all those experiences somehow magically sometimes find their way into what you're writing you know so um yeah, it just seems like uh, your work is rather literate. That uh, you know, uh, almost a, a, a you know a Frost-like title to the album, and uh, you know, uh, name-checking Frank O'Hara, and and you know, yeah. I would imagine that uh, that you've read your share of uh, of Dylan Thomas and and uh, and Rambo and and those those sorts of things. Uh, so maybe it's just overall an educated uh, approach that that's that you take to your songwriting yeah or yeah i suppose so or just like a interest of the sort of romantic um imagery and um 
Yeah, there's the romantic romanticism of of poetry, you know. Sure. Uh, yeah. Tell me about your first guitar. <laughs> first guitar. Well, I was in college. Uh, really? Yeah, and because I had played bass before that, remember, uh, bass guitar. Right. And I was in college. It was like a Takamine. It was just like a cheap acoustic guitar. Yeah, I think my mom got it for me. At a three hundred dollar Washburn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And I had it for a long time, actually, and I think the first, I even had it like for the first Seawolf shows. I was playing that guitar, and then um, at one point, the label Dangerbird was like, "You think you should be playing like maybe a Martin?" <laughs> <laughs> so they got me. So I was like, "All right, I'll do that." That's pretty nice. That's a good upgrade. Yeah. Um, what do you think you would be do? I always like to ask these. These are kind of Miss America questions at the end, but I, they they tell me a lot. Um, what do you think you would be doing right now if it weren't for music? If uh, if music wasn't an, an option for you as a vocation? Right. Um. Probably something in the film, the film realm. I would think because that's my other kind of big interest. And um, went to film school, moved out here to. Either well, I wanted to start a band, and I also wanted to, you know, dip my feet into the film world, um, and did that a little bit, just enough to realize that music was really the thing that I wanted to do most. Um, I just immediately felt like I had more sort of power over it and con control over it because what's with film, it's such a, it's like collaborative on a grand scale, whereas right. music is much, you know, smaller, tighter. Um, and songs are, you know, three and a half minutes and you can just do it by yourself. So, um, but I, I imagine that I probably, you know, if music hadn't sort of uh, run away with me because I didn't, I never would have expected to be doing music, honestly, for as a living. Um, I probably would end up in film somehow. I don't know what. And what else are you doing to keep yourself sane during, uh, during this Lockdown. What are, what are you doing in quarantine to occupy your time? Watching a lot of ne Netflix or what? Not really. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm not watching any more like Netflix or movies than I usually do. I think it's, you know, the main thing is that the social aspect of life has um, moved onto screens. Uh, but other than that, like my day to day life, you know, I'm always. My studio's here, like neck, like just beneath my house is my studio. So it's not that much different, you know. If I would be on, I should be on tour right now is the main thing. Right. Uh, so it's a little strange to like know that I'm not going to be touring for at least the rest of the year, probably and right. longer. Um, very strange. I'm like, well, I just maybe I'll make another record. I don't know. I'm just. Um, so I'm, I'm doing like little video things and things to kind of continue promoting this album and thinking about more music to make. Well, uh, people that have listened to these songs on 88.5 FM, I, I feel we've sold some, some records. Uh, Forever, Nevermore and Fear of Failure, the two tracks that you recognize from uh, Seawolf on 88.5 FM. And go buy the new album. It's, uh, it's really a, a fine record. It's called Through a Dark Wood. And I know it kills you to not be able to do this. This is how musicians make, uh, make their way these days, is going from town to town and playing this music for people. Um, so uh, I know that that's a, a real... Uh, a confining thing for you and, and um, uh, quite a constraint. So um, our hearts go out to you in that regard, but hopefully we can get the word out about your record and soon, one day soon, we'll uh, see you playing live here in Southern California. Hopefully for all of us, yeah. <laughs> for all our sanity. Uh, Alex Brown Church uh, is Seawolf. Thanks for joining us here at home on 88.5 FM. Thanks, Andy.